Is there evidence that God or something like God exists? Yes, we've already seen that a necessary being probably exists, but why think that being is personal? Well, the fine-tuning evidence makes that hypothesis really likely. What is the fine-tuning evidence, and how does it point to God? Michael Rhoda answers these questions in his book, Taking Pascal's Wager. He presents an argument for an intelligent necessary being, using just one example from fine-tuning and a bit of math from Bayes' theorem. If that interests you, then stick around. We'll discuss his argument in much more detail. <laughs> Before offering a fine-tuning argument, we first need to define what fine-tuning means. To say that the universe is finely tuned for life is to say that certain constants of physics and initial conditions of the universe have to be just right, in the sense that they fall within a very narrow range. And if they were ever so slightly different, then the evolution of life would not have been possible. You may be surprised to learn that fine-tuning is widely accepted among the experts studying the origin and nature of our universe. Here's a list of just some of them. Examples of fine-tuning would include the strength of gravity, the strength of the strong force, the strength of the electromagnetic force, the strength of the weak force, and the difference between the mass of the neutron and the mass of the proton. One of the most astonishing cases of fine-tuning, though, is what's called the cosmological constant. What is that? Well, in 2011, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to a team of researchers who discovered that space was accelerating in its expansion, not decelerating as was previously thought. The rate of this acceleration is related to a parameter called the cosmological constant. This constant turns out to be an extremely small positive number, 1.35 times 10 to the negative 123rd Planck units to be exact. Here's where it gets really interesting. According to physicists, the cosmological constant could have been anywhere between negative one Planck units and positive one Planck units. So they ask, what would the consequences have been if the cosmological constant were a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller than it actually is? Well, the Nobel Prize winning physicist Steven Weinberg has answered this question. He says, if it were 1,000 times bigger than it actually is, which is bigger than about 1 over 10 to the 120th, then the universe would have expanded too rapidly to form galaxies, stars, and planets. That's a problem because all the chemical elements except the three simplest ones, hydrogen, helium, and lithium, only get produced in stars. Without stars, you'd be left with just hydrogen, helium, and lithium. But it's really hard to see how you could get life out of just those three basic elements. And to make matters worse, if the cosmological constant were only a little bit bigger still, then even those three elements wouldn't interact. Weinberg says, on the other hand, if the cosmological constant had been a little smaller, less than negative one over 10 to the 120th power, then the universe would collapse far too soon for life to evolve. The point is that the actual value of the cosmological constant lies in an extraordinarily narrow life-permitting range compared to the possible value that it could have been. The range of possible values for the cosmological constant is at least 10 to the 53rd, according to physicists who err on the side of skepticism, to 10 to the 120th times larger than the life-permitting range. To put that in perspective, those odds are about the same as getting dealt a royal flush for 20 consecutive hands in a game of poker. So we're left with what appears to be this enormous coincidence that cries out for explanation. The question is, which hypothesis best explains the fine-tuning of the cosmological constant? Bayes' theorem can help. Let E represent our evidence, the fact that the cosmological constant falls within the very narrow life-permitting range. Let HD represent the hypothesis that an intelligent being was involved in the production of our universe. Let H not D represent the hypothesis that it is not the case that an intelligent being was involved in the production of our universe. And let K represent our relevant background knowledge, that the cosmological constant could have fallen within a very wide range of values, at least 10 to the 53rd wider than the life permitting range. What we're interested in is the probability of the hypothesis HD given our evidence E and the relevant background knowledge K. This will tell us what level of confidence it's rational to have in the hypothesis that an intelligent being was involved in the production of our universe. We can calculate this epistemic probability using the rest of Bayes' theorem. 
The strength of Rhoda's fine-tuning argument lies in the premise that a life-permitting cosmological constant is to be much more expected if there is a designer than if there is not. We can symbolize this premise like this. So how much should E be expected given the designer hypothesis and K? Well, the existence of embodied, rational, and moral agents like ourselves is a great good, and a life-permitting universe is a prerequisite for those kinds of beings. So the designer of the universe would have a good reason to make it life-permitting. That makes me think the chance is over one half. But in order to concede as much as possible to the skeptic who says we know very little about what a universe designer might want, let's say the chance is really low, like one in a billion. That is one in 10 to the ninth. The next 30 seconds are gonna be the most math heavy, but just know it's not essential that you understand these steps to get the overall argument. I'm doing this for those who, like me, want the details. To simplify our equation, let alpha represent the probability of E given H not D and K. That's equal to one over 10 to the 53rd. Let the probability of E given H, D and K equal what we said a moment ago, one over 10 to the ninth or one in a billion. That's equivalent to 10 to the 44th over 10 to the 53rd, which is also equivalent to 10 to the 44th times alpha. Substitute these values into Bayes' theorem and you get this. The alphas cancel, and since HD and H not D are contradictory propositions, we can rewrite this term as one minus the probability of HD given K. We can then simplify the denominator, leaving us with this equation. Phew. Okay, the most technical part is over. We just need to figure out the value of this last term. It's called the prior probability of our hypothesis HD. Different people will have different estimates of the prior probability of a universe designer. If you have a strong intuitive sense of the existence of God, and you don't find arguments against him very compelling, then you'll think the prior probability is high. If you lack an intuitive sense of God and you find arguments against him pretty compelling, then your prior probability is going to be low. The usefulness of this equation is that it shows that it is reasonable to accept the design hypothesis as nearly certain, even if you start out thinking that it's really unlikely that our universe was produced by an intelligent being. To see how this works, suppose you start out thinking the probability of this design hypothesis is one half, because you think maybe there's a God, maybe there isn't, I don't know, I'm kind of 50-50. When you do the calculation, you find that after taking the evidence of the cosmological constant into account, the posterior probability of the design hypothesis is well over 0.9999999. If instead you think the prior probability is 1 in 10, there's a 10% chance of there actually being a universe designer. The posterior probability is still 0.9999999. Say you think it's really low, like 1 out of 10,000. The posterior probability is still 0.999999. In case you're wondering, the prior probability of the design hypothesis would have to be all the way down at 1 in 10 to the 44th in order for the posterior probability to be just one half. And keep in mind, that is considering only the evidence of the cosmological constant. Once you factor in other cases of fine tuning like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, especially the case of entropy, the level of confidence you should have in the intelligent necessary being hypothesis is high, really high. To summarize, we had two competing hypotheses about the necessary being involved in the production of our universe. Hypothesis HD said that it is intelligent. Hypothesis H not D said it is not intelligent. We then used Bayes' theorem to determine what level of confidence we should place in the designer hypothesis given the fine tuning of the cosmological constant for life. Since the probability of that evidence is greater on the design hypothesis than the no design hypothesis, our answer showed that we should have a very high degree of confidence that the necessary being is intelligent, thereby indicating that it has a mind and is personal. That kind of being sounds a lot like God. There are objections to this argument though, as you probably expected, and we'll answer those objections in the next video. Let me know your thoughts about this argument in the comments below. I appreciate your feedback. And please, consider subscribing if you enjoy the content of this video and the content of this channel. See you next time.